Hi, welcome to Awake TV. So today, Sue and I are going to talk about through immersion to the current moment. So now we are shifting more and more to 5D. And then a lot of galactic beings or higher beings always talk about staying present. And then more than ever, more than ever, it is very important to talk about this topic because of what's going on around us. So what, do you, what is your thought about this? The saying, um, you know, there, there's a song by Molly Cyrus, it's called The Mountain. And um, she talks about, uh, well, no, maybe that's the wrong title. I can't remember. She, oh, the song's called The Ride. And um, we, we never stop looking to our goals. But um, if we don't stop to pay attention along the way as we're going, then we miss um, a lot of the important stuff for the journey, the ride. And um, so for me, I noticed moment to moment focus um, has to do with enjoyment of life. I mean, our souls didn't come here to, uh, to rush through it. And as much as we want to see the changes, um, as we become fully immersed into uh, 5D reality, we still have, <laughs> our souls have intended for us as humans, our aspect to gain things along the way to uh, absorb experience not just fly through it um, and I would liken it to a, a dessert right if you're gonna if you're gonna go ahead and splurge and have a dessert right I <laughs> and I watch my own family members do this too um, some people sit there and they eat it so fast and I and I make a joke and I'll go did you even taste that and what I'm really trying to say is if you're going to go ahead and have the dessert, you might as well enjoy it because um, the texture, the taste, the sweetness, however, it makes you feel, you know, geez, you haven't had chocolate in a while. So you really enjoy that chocolate, right? If you're, if you're talking while you're eating or you're paying attention to your phone or something else, you know, watching TV or whatever, and you're just kind of mindlessly eating it what's the point of eating it? <laughs> so uh, I'll give you an example. I was, so yesterday I had, no, that's today, actually today. Sorry, the days are melding into each other with me. Um, today I had a Tai Chi class uh, in the morning. And as you know, I've been really, really excited about uh, learning Tai Chi for years actually and I, I just found a free program at the library and I thought oh how cool is that right so as I the, and the lady the instructor was on zoom um, but I did go to the library um, at, to do an in-person class and there was one other person there which is which was cool but um I noticed that if I really intently listened to her and I wasn't paying attention to anybody else on the Zoom call, I wasn't thinking about the library around me and we were in a room, but you know, still I have ADD. So it's like noises and all kinds of things. When there's traffic around me, I can, my attention can be pulled away very easily. <laughs> so I really focused and not only was I understanding the instructions, you know, your foot position, your hand position, your shoulders, um, your breath, and those kind of things, and the why behind it, which was nice, because now I really understand these motions and positions and what they're doing for my body as I go through them. Um, I could feel the uh, energy moving through my body. I mean, I was paying just that much attention. Whereas, um, you know, generally, if we exercise or do something per like that, um, we can feel maybe our, our respirations increasing and maybe, you know, our blood pressure is pumping and that sort of thing. But I mean, I could feel where the energy was moving through my body. And that kind of focus, that moment point focus, I mean, that's the whole reason why I went to this class. Mm. So I got a lot out of it and I was really grateful for that. And then 
I decided on the way home that I was going to stop at Cracker Barrel because I was really jonesing for those fried apples they have. And they're really good. <laughs> um, and I haven't had them in ages. And I thought, I really want those fried apples. And I was going to get them to go. But the, chop, the shop was so charming. They have Christmas up already, which doesn't bother me because I love Christmas any time of the year. So I got to look at a bunch of stuff. And um, I decided, well, I might as well just have a seat and have a little bit of breakfast because I hadn't eaten today. So... I sat down and my order came and I was going through the paperwork that I got from the Tai Chi class and the foods in front of me. And I thought, no, I'm not going to sit here and read this paperwork. I'm going to put it aside for later when I have another moment point where I have nothing better to do. Right. Or I just feel inspired to read it because I'm really going to pay attention to this food. I mean, after all, the whole reason I came is for these fried apples <laughs> and now they're sitting in front of me. And so I noticed the texture, I noticed the taste, the smell of them. And by the way, I always find Cracker Barrel, not always, but usually find it quite charming, a nice little homey place to sit. I like country settings. And um, I was noticing the people and the children and the sun shining through the window, et cetera, et cetera. And I just feel like it was a much fuller experience than had I sat there eating my food without thinking about it and reading these papers, even though it was another experience that I had that day that I fully enjoyed. I didn't want to transfer that into this and take away from this. Hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. You're, you're staying in present. You're focusing on what's going on. Yeah. And I, I just, I think that if we can um, train ourselves you know, whatever we're doing, especially if we're watching our kids, you know, for those folks that have children, trust me, my kids are grown. They grow up so fast. Um, don't get on that phone and stop paying attention to what your little one's doing. I mean, I get it. I need adult time as much as anybody else. But um, I see people constantly doing this at the pool where, where I live. It's, it's, it's like their kids or in the water, they're doing things, they're, they're safe, you know, they got their floaties on or whatever, and parents are sitting on the, in the chairs on their gadgets or whatever. And I think truth be told, I probably did a lot of that too, even though we didn't have cell phones when my kids were growing up, but um, we miss a lot. We miss a lot if we're not present moment focused. And we could always schedule adult time later, but when your kids are little, I mean, goes by so fast guys you know try and pull every pull every last bit out of it because they grow so fast I mean they're like my kitten right she's she's like almost doubled her weight since she came home and it's only been a few weeks it's and then you go oh I wish she was that little kitten again I don't know I just think we can miss a lot if we're not careful mm. makes sense it's like, um, it's a little bit different, but a few days ago, I was doing some um, energy work, maybe meditation. I don't, I don't exactly remember because I've been so busy, but whole point was, yeah, I was, I was watching tarot card reading and she was talking something about sadness, but sadness, um, was brought not by you, but like passed down from ancestors to your parents or whatever, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And then I was focusing on that emotion because I wasn't really sad at the moment, but I was focusing on. And then when you're focusing on exactly how you're feeling and then accept whatever's happening in your present life, exactly as it is instead of like oh i wish this and that just exactly as is because actuarians and other other beings are always talking about beautiful as to create a new life first we have to accept your life as is not mm -hmm. i wish how it is or you know angry at whatever happening in your life just the zen kind of mode and accept as is mm -hmm. so I was kind of doing that 
No, I was doing that. I, I wasn't kind of, I was doing that. And then I was like, oh, this is like exactly how um, Acturians are talking about. Because as long as we live here on earth, when you think about your life, not everything is perfect, right? So there's something you feel like you wish this and that, more or less, right? And then once you started accepting your past or whatever the present exactly as is, then you can finally let go of it because you don't have any energetic or emotional attachment that you wish this and that. Mm -hmm. you know like you become totally neutral about it so that was my experience of staying in present like you don't think about past you don't think about future you're staying in present and i think one of the easier ways of um doing that sort of thing especially if your present moment isn't exactly what you would wish for is um and we've we've talked about this so many times but i really want it to become ad nauseum for folks to hear this um you got to look for what's going right right instead of completely focusing on what you don't like about a situation because that just keeps the energy going yeah and when we can be grateful for what we have um, and you know, back in my early days, I used to <laughs> struggle, right. Financially and physically. I mean, I was tired all the time because I was raising a child, going to school, working all at the same time. And it was as a single parent for a while and it was, it was exhausting. And then there were days where I would kind of almost feel sorry for myself. And then sometimes I'd look around me and I'd go, yeah, but I have it really good compared to some other people um and that's not taking any joy in someone else's misfortune that's just simple recognition that it could always be worse mm -hmm. and uh you know I had all my limbs I had enough energy to to do what I needed to do and yeah I was tired at the end of the day but I knew it wasn't going to last forever so and that's the other thing about sticky situations, you know, staying in the present moment and really uh, bringing that in and focusing on it isn't as um, hard to do when we realize that the things that we don't like are temporary. Um, nothing lasts forever, even though it may seem like forever when, when things are dense um, or difficult or sticky. Um it just won't, it, it won't, and it can't because the nature of the universe is that things are always changing. Yeah. Nothing, nothing stays sedentary. Energy is motion and everything is energy. So therefore everything is in motion. And um, yeah, it's a, it's a lot easier to pass those days and those moments when we're focusing on what's going right rather than what we don't like. And it's a better energy, right? It's it's uh and then when you get presented this um ending, right? You know whatever the stuff you've been through is over, whatever the cycle is over. And then when you get presented a new opportunity, you don't know what's gonna happen. There's an uncertainty and there's a fear might come up to you. But it's really important to have faith and then move on instead of sticking with the situation that you didn't like. But at least you know you can predict this certainty of how everything is going to be, you know. So I was listening to YouTube today and then some guy was saying there's a difference between successful people and not not successful people usually successful people make their decision really fast and then they try it and unsuccessful people they take forever to make a decision including mm. like let's say they are working at the place 
they are not really happy or whatever the situation, they are not really happy. They end up staying in that kind of environment because they have to overthink like, oh, what, what's going to happen if I move to this new company or, or I don't know if I want to be more successful. At least I want to make this amount of money if I stay here. Mm -hmm. I'm just using an example, right? Like a false security. Yeah. I, mean, I don't really like where I am, but at least I know what it is rather than taking a chance. Yeah. It's like certainty, right? Let's say if you are in unhappy marriage, you know, at least what you can predict because yeah. you've been in this marriage for certain amount of years, right? Once you decide to leave, you don't know if you want to meet a new guy. You may, you may be a single forever, right? Then mm -hmm. all this uncertainty will crawling up to you, even though the opportunity of the change will be presented. All of us are gonna get presented at this moment. You have to make a big decision whether you leave the present situation to have a faith, leap of the faith, and then move into new beginning, which you don't know what's gonna happen to you, or you wanna stick to the same situation. Yeah. yeah. And, and I think um, when I was in my counseling years, when I when I used to be a counselor, one of the things I noticed is that for folks that would come in and talk to me and um, complain about their current situation, and then what I would do is try to um, help them make lists or, you know, have discussions about what they would like to see have happen rather than what they're doing and then we get to a point of uh oh, okay so we've identified that you're interested in this this and this or maybe there's only one option or maybe there's several and then so what's the reason for not moving forward and then you get then i'd get the laundry list of reasons why and then if if all else failed um for talking me out of why they're not doing what they really want to do right because I'm not the important one but apparently they thought I was it was me that needed convincing but what ended up coming out was that um, the final last straw would be well I can't afford it that would be like the coup d'etat right it's like okay I'm definitely not making this forward motion because they would convince themselves I can't afford it even when there were things identified in the process which would help which they obviously could afford it right and that's when I knew that there was a level of resistance that there was no way I was going to permeate no matter what I said and and it was just completely up to them they weren't ready they were afraid and so when you get that many reasons to not do something you've just identified that you want to do and then you pull out the granddaddy which is well I can't afford it it's like they're just not ready so I think what I'm hearing you say is that um, we can fully talk ourselves out of our happiness. Yeah. If we get into the future and projecting all the things that could go wrong. I mean, in the moment point, if you've made some plans and you've uh, thought about things and you figured out how you can move forward towards your happiness, if you're not doing it, it's because you're buying into fears of future, which is not the moment point. Right. And also it, buying into uncertainty. Buying into, yeah. And uncertainty means you could create your life any way you want, but instead, a lot of people associate uncertainty as fear, fearful mm -hmm. thing, right? Because you, you can predict what's going to happen. Yeah. And, and really, are we living if we're doing that? Now, I've seen some really happy people with a lot less in their lives than, than I've ever had and content and just not needing really to change. Um, and that's great. I mean, if we don't need to keep up with the Joneses, we don't need to have what other people have just because everybody says we should have it. If it's not what you want, then be fine with where you are and be content with that. But what we're, we're kind of saying, you know, if you stay, if you're staying in your moment, if you find it easy to stay in your moment point, that's an indicator that your life is going pretty well. Um, for those that wish for change, your moment point focus 
and um, really paying attention to how these actions that you're taking are affecting, you know, getting to your goal um, or not, what's succeeding, what isn't. Well, you're not going to figure that out unless you're staying in the moment point because, okay, I tried this avenue and this happened and it felt this way and I didn't really like the way that ha that worked out or I liked it a lot. I'm going to do more of that. We can come up with those kind of decisions by staying moment focus. If we're allowing a lot of static to go on around us while we're making our forward motions, um, it can get lost. Like the, the way forward can get lost, I think. Yeah. And then also a lot of what if questions, that's like, that's a huge difference between people who are successful. Like my surrogate that used to tell me the same thing, like the difference between successful people and successful people like successful people make an instant decision and try it. And when once something doesn't go right, you think about how you can fix it or you quit and do next thing, next thing, next thing. You're not going to stick around like 10 years to, I mean, unless that is your passion. But all of his point is they don't think 10 different way of what's going to happen by making the decision you when you think it's a good idea you just do it to see how it goes it kind of makes sense I feel like i feel like you're talking about like acting on an inspiration it's like you're it's like you know inside yourself i mean because it could be considered impulsive not to consider a new action a little bit more than a quick response however i think you're talking about acting on an inspiration like there's an inner calling it's like your soul is talking to you and saying yeah let's do this if you got excited about it if you feel you know that you have what it takes to do what you're going for so that makes it a little bit easier to not overthink it yeah and all her a lot of times like i personally met a lot of successful people who happen to be wealthy and then they trust on their gut feeling so they have a proof as if they follow their gut feeling and it feels good, they're just going to make a decision right away. It's not just a business decision. Marriage too, you know, they're not going to keep on thinking for three years to decide, oh, do, do I want to marry her? No, you know, right away, you know, <laughs> right away he knows like, oh, she's my wife. The whole point is mm -hmm. like these people are not afraid of failing because if you retract yourself fast when you're trying something and I say, oops, this is not working out. So before you get too deep into it, you just retract yourself and do something else. So mm -hmm. it's not as painful as we think of, right? Like I used to think a lot about what if, mm. but now, not now, but uh, last seven years or maybe eight years, I don't really think that deep anymore. When I feel like I want to try it, I just want to do it. And that was the first thing my surrogate that was saying, oh, you changed the law, you just do it. And I'm like, yeah, because it doesn't really cost you anything. Yeah, it, it's going to cost you energy or <laughs> if it didn't go well, maybe hurt your pride. But at least you learn how you can do better next time, right? Yeah. And then even like you get into a new environment or something and you don't know how to do things, that shouldn't be a um, trigger for your fear because you can always learn how to do it. You can always adapt new skills, new whatever, right? So uncertainty is not always something you can be fearful. Uncertainty always going to take you to unlimited possibility because you never reached to that uncertainty before because you decided to play safe. Yeah. And I mean, take it from somebody who, uh, who invested quite a bit of money by way of uh, student loans for a profession that in the end, I just went, uh, this isn't for me. I mean, 30 grand, right? And uh, I had to look at it and go, I had to go all the way through the program just to go, nah, 
seemed like a good idea. Now, none of that's wasted, by the way, because everything that I learned during that time, I still have as tools and I use. I just didn't go into the profession. Um, but I use those skills in what I do now with the quantum healing when I deal with clients. So um, sometimes you make a, phys- uh, a financial investment and it doesn't pan out. That's okay. You can always go out and make more money tomorrow. Um, yeah. it, it, we're so afraid of failing, <laughs> aren't we? I mean, a lot of people are just so afraid of what is that? It's not a failure. It's just a cha- we changed our mind about something um, or we tried it and we found out it wasn't for us. So or we or along the way, I mean, it was for us. It was for us. It was for us. And then a higher decision came in and yeah, or a better choice. So took its place. It's like uh, how you define the failure, right? If you. Yeah. A lot of people say, oh, yeah, unless you keep on marrying to the same person from the first marriage, like some people look at, you know, people who get divorced and marry again as a failure, right? But I mean, some of us don't look at that way because when you kind of made a mistake of choosing the wrong partner, I feel like um, Picking the right person in first marriage is probably harder than winning the lottery, you know, unless you decided to go out with, with each other for 10 years or something, you know. <laughs> Most of the people they meet and then within a year, oh my God, this is a person and you get married. Like you make a decision like 25, 28 or 30, that's really young. I mean, we could make better decision now, you know, after not being 20s or whatever, because you have more life experience. But because of the biological clock and stuff, like people are forced to make a decision at such a young age, and then you are expected to get it right. Well, and, and that kind of goes to the point we're trying to make about immersing yourself in the current moment. Because if you look at a marriage that ended as a failure, you're looking at the whole of it. Or if you're staying in the moment, in the moments that were really good and when it was working, and you then you would consider it a success, even though it ended. Yeah. Because, I mean, whether you're talking about marriage, a career, uh, a family member, um, friendship, everything has its expiration date. Mm-hmm. And, and sometimes if you're lucky, the expiration date is when one or the other of you dies. But... <laughs> most of our relationships don't have that kind of longevity and they're not supposed to. I mean, we spiritually contracted, you know, our souls contracted it that way. Person comes in certain part of your life. You both get something out of it. The Mm -hmm. lessons done, the, whatever it is you were sharing together is complete. So you fall out. You don't really even fall out. You don't have an argument. You just stop calling or you stop seeing each other, you know, and you're busy and your life's going in different directions. That relationship wasn't a failure. It, it met its purpose. It was, it did exactly what it was supposed to do. And sometimes, you know, I've done it myself. Sometimes I look back at friends that I don't talk to anymore. I go, gee, you know, I kind of really miss that person. Well, the love that was there is still there. It hasn't gone anywhere. I mean, love is forever. Once you feel a connection with somebody, whether you're together or not, it's, it's still there. Um, So how we define failure, as you said, is absolutely very important. And if, and, and I promise you, if you, if we can just immerse ourselves in the current moment, then really nothing's a failure. Yeah. If you learn something about the experience, you're always winning. Seriously. I agree. So like, even for marriage, let's say you only had the three years marriage and then let's say you had a kid or something and then you will continue your relationship as a parent. So form of the association with this person is different now, but that doesn't mean you failed your marriage. You kind of discovered, wow, we are so incompatible. And then there is somebody out there who is more compatible with me 
will come to my life. You can think that way. So almost like um, improving yourself because you know yourself more. Yeah, and if in these moment points that string together into some kind of history are a series of moment points that are becoming increasingly uncomfortable, you know, um, that's your sign. That's your internal knowing that, you know, this moment point to this moment point to this moment point, and it's just not getting any better. It's not that we have like um, a bunch of great times and every now and again, it's uncomfortable, but it's like moments stretch into days, stretch into weeks, stretch into years, and it's not getting any better than Basically, what you're doing by staying in that situation is um, you're both ripping each other off from having the kind of happiness that you could have. Yeah, you're killing yourself slowly, like mentally. Like yeah. It's, it's called the same situation with job, right? You're mm -hmm. staying in this job you don't like because at least you're certain. But you're so unhappy about it. So even you decided to leave this job for something uncertain, job at least you are sort of like um stepping into the wave of the energy which is bringing you to have a new life instead of sticking to this old life you feel so miserable I and mean, you are sticking to it because at least it's certain certain i can't remember what a uh, famous person said this but I think it was a baseball player. Was, uh, he was talking about um, taking the chance and asking the woman that he wanted um, to marry, or, you know, at least to know very well. I think it was along the lines of um, five seconds of courage turned into a lifetime of happiness. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, I, I could be mixing my metaphors back it's a true story that I'm thinking of. It's like tickling my brain right now. And um, I think that's a true statement. You know, just a few seconds of courage can change your whole life. Um, if we're just willing to step out of that, I know it box, you know, I know this scenario box. I, I'm, I've been horribly unhappy, but at least it's what I know. It's the unhappiness that I know versus the unknown. Um, I don't know. I've evolved in my life to where I'm, I'm willing to, I'm taking that five seconds of courage because who knows, it could be great. It could yeah. suck. It could be great, but you're not going to know unless you try. Yeah. I mean, uncertainty is not such a bad thing. If that comes from someone who values certainty a lot. Right. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> I no longer feel uh, certainty is important. You just have to certain about your how you feel in your heart. Everything else, even if you are uncertain and then move do your new job or start going dating a new person, if it's not the right, you can change always. Yeah. Yeah. You know? So there's no there's no failure. Um, I was told by um, well, the multi-millionaire guy, only time you are unsuccessful because you never tried it. Exactly. Yep. I have to laugh because, you know, we, we've been talking a lot about relationships, but um, we got about five minutes just so you know. Um, we've been talking about relationships and several people that I know that I love dearly, but um. <laughs> Their reason for staying in a bad relationship is, well, I don't want to be alone. You know, they feel like they've come to a certain point in their life where their options would be limited. So having somebody is better than nobody. But yet they're so relieved when that other person goes away <laughs> and they're by themselves. And I think to myself, well, if you were in the moment point, you'd notice that, hey, this is great. I, I'd rather be by myself than be with this person. Right. And I'm not judging. I'm just noticing. Uh, I'm noticing these things. And um, now I've been in bad relationships, too. And trust me, I really got to a point, luckily, at a young age where I said to myself, I'd rather be by myself than be treated, you know, feel this way. Um, and once that decision was made, the 
the one I'm with now for all these years is it came into my life, but I had to make that choice. I had to have courage and say, I'd rather be alone than be mistreated or be treated like a, an afterthought in somebody's life. Yeah. Or option. So an option. Yeah. Being alone is not bad because you can be so free. You can do anything you want. You don't have to cook for the other person. You know, you don't have to go to the movies or whatever sports game. Or, or you can go see what the movie you want to see versus yeah. that, that half an hour argument of which one are we going to go see? Or food, you know? <laughs> yeah. Food. Being alone is so much freedom than, um, being with a partner who is not that comparable with you and then yeah. it, it really taxes you emotionally like I, I also thought being alone is a lot better than being with someone who you're not happy with so <laughs> yeah. you know but just because you break up with someone or divorce doesn't mean you're going to be alone the rest of your life that's how you see how you believe because there are plenty of people out there. If you look at the world that way, you can find plenty of other people. Yeah, I think the Earth's population has gotten to be um, 8 billion. I heard recently. I don't know if that's true, but um, that's a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, there's somebody for everybody. And um, yeah, you know, getting back to the moment thing the fully immersed in the moment I think that's one good way of telling if you can do that on a regular and get really good at being in the moment point that's a good way to find out okay. whether whether that person is right for you or not because you know you might get ticked at somebody um for a certain behavior or a habit they have so um that can be remedied, that can be worked through, you know, if you're able to sit and converse with somebody. So is it every moment? Is it most of your moments? Or is it rare, rare moments um, that you feel this kind of dissatisfaction? And, you know, these are gauging, these are ways to gauge, but we have to be engaged in ourselves in our reality and our moment points. Otherwise, it becomes a blur. Then the, you know, that's where we sit there and spend a lot of time going back and forth. Well, is it really all that bad? Oh, I don't know. Um, we have to be more present yeah. in, our, in our moments. And that's how we can figure out, yeah, this is all the time. <laughs> I'm really yeah. with the wrong person. Or no, it's only when he or she does this. Okay, that's a situation. A situation or a habit can be remedied, right? Then you might say, well, I'm going to work on that. But if we're not present in our moments, it's it's really hard to tell. Things become blurry and the way forward can be difficult to decide. Yeah, and then when you are staying present, you can get in touch with your feelings instead of your brain. So next week, Sun and I are going to bring a more interesting topic. Thank you so much for watching. Please share, subscribe, and we see you next week. Bye. Bye.